Okay, hi, it's Pete. Uh, we're just going to have a quick look then at how we can create flyers, leaflets and posters using um, Open Office. The next step that we really ought to think about is planning the flyer. So what is it that you want to actually create or what is it you're trying to actually advertise? Where is it? So you need to give some sort of address or location of where it's going to take place. When is it? Obviously the date and time would be good. And how much does it cost? Again, a vital importance. It's pointless trying to sell something if you don't tell people what they're going to have to pay. And how long does it take? So for example, if it's uh, an event like the upcoming IT Buddies course, it's going to take 12 weeks. So uh, we need to make sure that all of that is available for people to look at. Before you actually start creating a flyer, it is a good idea to go and find any images that you actually want to use and to have an idea of the sort of text that you're going to want. I would always use the phone numbers, check you've got the right phone numbers and then decide upon a call to action. When you're actually advertising a car for sale, for example, what you want somebody to do is to get in touch. So saying car for sale just informs people there's a car for sale. But if you then say car for sale, call on this number, you're then giving people a call to action and you stand a better chance of selling your car. OK, so let's move on then and let's look at how we can create a flyer, a leaflet or poster using Open Office. OK, so I've started to launch uh, Open Office uh, and I'm using Open Office Impress, which is the presentation package. I've opened the presentation wizard, which is the default way that you'd actually come into the package. And as you can see, I'm going to start by using an empty presentation. I can then click on Next. And then here I can say what sort of a slide design I want. Well, I'm not going to use a slide design. I'm, we're going to do this all ourselves. And then select an output medium. So do I want it for the screen, an overhead, a slide, or for paper? Well, this is going to be a flyer, so we're going to use it on paper. So I select paper. And then I can click on Next again. There isn't going to be any slide transitions because we're not going to be using it as a slide. We're going to be printing out a piece of paper, so that's fine. So therefore, all we need to do then is to click on Create. And when I click on Create, it then opens up the, um, the uh, Open Office uh, package and it's all ready for me to use. Now, as you can see, what I've actually got here is something that looks like a, um, a sheet of paper and it's laid out in this particular manner. Now, if I want to change that, then what I can do is I can go up to where it says Format and then it says Page. So I can format the page into being the style that I want. So I want it in A4, that's fine, but I'm going to use mine in Portrait. Now Portrait would actually set it up vertically uh, as we would normally see a piece of A4. I then select OK and there I've now got my piece of A4 ready for me to use. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I want to add a title. <clears throat> now to add a title, there is a box there that says click to add title. It gives us a, a, a cunning heading. So I can just put my cursor into there and then I can type in whatever heading I actually want. So I'm going to say, um, oh I know, become an IT buddy. So there is my, uh, my heading, it's all uh, in there. Now, here I can then start to play about with that. So by holding my mouse key down and highlighting that, I can actually just decide whether I would actually like to change the font. So for example, I'm going to go for an Arial rounded font. And there you can see that the font has changed a little bit and it's given it nice rounded corners. So it's a bit friendlier, I feel. I'd like all of that on one line. So I'm going to change the size of the font. Uh, and rather than it being at size uh, 58. I'm going to try it at size 48. Yep, that seems to fit. And it's not quite in the right place. So I'm going to point to the corner of that blue bounding box. And can you see how the arrow has turned to the sign of a four way cross? So that using that four way cursor, if I hold down my left hand mouse key, I can actually drag that around a little bit. Oops. So that it will actually go where I want it. So I've just moved that up a little bit. I'll just use that scroll bar to put that back in the middle of the page. Um, it's too big as well. So I'm going to use these little blue boxes at the side there just to shrink it down. And so I can play back with that until I get it in exactly the right place for me. Now, having done that, if I click back onto that box, I've got other options uh, that I can actually do. 
So for example here underneath where it says area if I click on the little plus sign then it will actually show me the options for area. So here I can actually give it a fill. So I could fill it with a colour and then I can choose the colour that I would like to fill it with. Now there's a, a lot of colours that's off the screen there but I'm going to go for that sort of uh, colour there. So as you can see I've now got my nice box in there become an IT buddy. Now this big box here I don't particularly want so I'm just going to click on the outside of that to select it and it's got those blue boxes around it. And if I then touch the delete key, it's now been deleted. So I've now got more space to work with. The next thing I want to do is I want to insert a picture. Now down at the bottom of the screen here, I've got the font work gallery. I've got uh, the ability to insert from file. And I've also got the ability to use the inside, the internal gallery that is actually built into OpenOffice. I can click onto the gallery and then I can see the various options that I've got. So I've got arrows, I've got backgrounds, I've got bullets, there's computers, um, I've got diagrams, environment, finance, homepage, uh, the ability to have my own themes, but that's the one I want, people. So I'm going to pick up on this, uh, this little person who's got the palette there, the artist, and just drag them down and drop her into my, uh, my poster. So there she is, she's now sat there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I want her to be able to uh, be advertising uh, what we're talking about. So here I want her to speak. So I'm going to use this call out button. So I click onto it and I can choose the style of call out that I want. I'm just going to use a very simple one. And then I can just drag out the size of box that I want for the text. So inside of there, I can then just start to type. So I'm going to get her to say, um, do you want to uh, learn about, um, and I'm using shift and enter so that I can actually keep it as one line, uh, use about computers, and then help other people in the community and a nice question mark, um, and I can now uh, play about with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click onto there and then I'm going to use this blue boxes again, just to make that a bit smaller so that it actually uh, fits better. This yellow button here, I can then pick up and I can move that and point it as though she's actually now saying that. So I can again, uh, I can do the same again, so I'm going to pick on that button. I draw out the square that I actually want. And then I can say, um, do you want to have some fun and learn at the same time? So again, I've got my, uh, my box there. Um, and again, I can click onto it get the blue boxes there which would allow me to resize that a little bit if I wanted to and then I can pick up that yellow box and point it back to her so she's actually asking the questions um, and then again I can ask a, a further one and again I'm just going to use exactly the same process are you free on a Tuesday oops I can't spell Tuesday afternoon um, and then once again, I can just click on that to get the, the blue box. Oops, get the blue box. Uh, and then I can just point that back up to her. So she's asking the question. I'm just going to move that a little bit and then reposition that yellow box. And as you can see, uh, we're building up quite a nice little uh, leaflet that's well balanced and we're starting to get the information there. And then what I want to do at the bottom here is to add in the contact information. Well, the contact information I'm going to put in as a big box across the bottom here. So I've drawn my box and again, I can start to type in contact. So contact uh, Pete and then I've got email. Ask Pete a question at gmail.com. 
Google Plus is plus P J Read, and then um, we'll also go for Twitter. Why not Twitter? And my Twitter name at I I C T Pete. Okay, now again, I can click onto this box uh, and I can then resize it and do anything else that I actually want to do with it. And here, I want to change this font again. So remember how we did it last time? I select the font that I want to use. I'm going to select all of that. Up here then, I can change the size of the font. Uh, 24, let's try just 26. Yeah, I think that's probably big enough. Um, I can then change the, uh, the, the, the box. So there I've got the colour. Well, I think something um, in a sort of... Well, that looks truly horrible, doesn't it? Let's try something in a green colour. So there it is. Um, we've now got my, my box there. And my little poster is all ready to go. Finally, what I would tend to do at this point would be to go to File and Save. Or Save As. So it would actually be saved on my desktop. So I'm going to save this down. Um, I'm going to stick it in my sky drive and just say save and then I can go to file and then I could actually uh, print this and then it's ready to go okay so there we are we're just about ready to ready to roll uh, and ready to create our documents now one or two points that I would mention is that many printers will have a non printing border where they can't actually get to the ink uh, into the into the corners. Now, if that's the case, then you may find that some of the text is cut off a little bit. In which case, you need to just move it in just a touch, like I've just done there, to make sure that you can actually sort of create the document properly and it works. Um, if you're using uh, a full color printer, then again, I would avoid using uh, too many different colors because again, it can be a bit garish. Um, and the other thing, of course, is that if you actually use uh, lavish backgrounds, then you're going to have to pay for the ink that paints in all of that background so it's probably a good idea not to use too many lavish backgrounds okay i hope that helps i look forward to talking to you let's crack on bye